Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and it is May 1945 in our Strategic Command World War II World at War Let's Play, and we're into the mid-60s in terms of our episode. The war is going well, we're playing as the Axis in India, uh, well actually first we knocked Russia out of the war, we knocked China out of the war. We have since thrown back the D-Day invasions and driven the Allies into the sea, and in the Pacific we're invading India. The Americans have sent substantial reinforcements here to help the British in India, but nonetheless the Japanese forces have kind of crossed the border and are slowly oozing their way westward from an eastern invasion of India uh, that started in um, Burma. Now, the Japanese are dealing with some serious supply challenges, so the invasion hasn't gone super smoothly, and it's definitely been costly, but nonetheless, we're slowly pushing these forces back just with sheer inertia. However, we are going to be running into some heavy American tanks and infantry divisions. The Western invasion of India being kicked off by the Germans coming out of Iran has met with some success as well. Karachi has fallen and the Germans have a large infantry and cavalry force inside Western India and without substantial reinforcements they threaten to break out and drive toward the interior of India toward Delhi or potentially toward Bombay. In addition to that, the Japanese have a second invasion which just drove the uh, British back from the city of Darjeeling, uh, which is on the northern border just to the east of, I think that's Nepal, in the mountainous region of India, which if this gets going, if this gets successful, and again there's logistical problems of trying to get supplies through the Alps, or not the Alps, the, uh, the Himalayas, but if this goes well, uh, the entire British front in eastern India is at risk. And frankly, if we break out of this border region in eastern India and we get to Calcutta where we can draw supplies from the sea, at that point, I think the Allied situation in India becomes non-tenable non because the terrain turns much more favorable as we get toward the interior of India. Meanwhile, in North Africa, the Germans have retaken Alexandria and are threatening Cairo uh, with advance. They're just waiting for their supplies to catch up. In western North Africa, or I guess it's sort of central North Africa, a lone Italian garrison has been holding out at the city of Alagela against massive British armored units and air units flying out of the rest, or the western portions of North Africa. In Italy, the Americans have been driven off of the Italian peninsula and into the uh, island of Sicily. Although the Germans are kind of pinned in and don't really have room to maneuver, uh, it's likely the Americans will largely evacuate Sicily. Otherwise, their force of strategic bombers will be easily destroyed by German ground units. In Western Europe, France has been liberated from the Allied invasion, and the Germans are now preparing for a cross-channel invasion, or will be shortly, of England. Now, that's probably going to take a few turns to materialize. We're going to spend next turn largely reinforcing our troops, and then we're also going to spend time trying to clear the channel of enemy uh, surface vessels. We have torpedo boats and submarines, which will help hold the sea lanes open and also help get good recon, and then our air forces will destroy the Allied fleets. The Americans have carriers at Liverpool. Uh, there are a large number of enemy naval vessels left. That's the one area the enemy still largely has supremacy. 21 British naval vessels, 24 American. We don't know where the bulk of the American fleet is. We know there's two cruisers here near uh, Guadalcanal. And actually, has this guy done? No, he's already moved. We also know there's a cruiser, a British cruiser, off the uh, Australian coast. We know there's an American escort carrier somewhere over here. Um, but we don't know really what else the Americans have uh, to bring against us. We've just sunk a British and an American carrier near the Timor Sea, uh, so there was a recent victory there, and we're in the process of expelling the Americans from the island of Java. If that goes well, then we also have naval forces on transports, which we likely will want to send against India or some other target uh, of opportunity. So we may invade India with the Japanese once Java's secure, uh, or sorry, we've already invaded India. We may invade Australia, so Japan could take Australia and India. Germany could finish taking North Africa and the British Empire, and then also begin moving toward uh, an invasion of England itself. An invasion of America is, seems largely improbable, uh, given the current situation, uh, but that's kind of my thought process right now, anyway, is that I think it's unlikely that we would invade um, I think it's unlikely that we would invade 
America directly. I just don't think we'll end up having the time. Um, but we may well end up invading, uh, you know, sort of secondary uh, locations like out or like uh, Australia. All right. Reinforce these guys with the little money we have left, and then we're going to go ahead and end the turn. Oh, one other thing worth calling out. Chile's declared war on Argentina, and Argentina is fighting Chile, Peru, Venezuela, all of the Central American countries. They've already knocked Brazil out of the war, though. So with that being said, it is May of 1945. Let's go ahead and get our turn started, and let's uh, see what the Allies do on this turn as we move toward June. Okay. They still have supply on Crete. I keep forgetting about that. You know, the funny thing is with their naval supremacy in the Mediterranean, they could easily do like another D-Day on the uh, Palestinian coast and get it in behind our forces there. It's certainly an option for them. They just really have been pretty passive on the amphibious front despite large numbers of troops. If I was playing against a human opponent, I fully expect they would be a much bigger pain in the ass for us to deal with. Just from a keeping us on our toes and invading in a wide variety of places type of a deal. Okay, some bombardment action going there on the coast of Australia, or sorry, of Italy. American cruisers are moving into the Arafura Sea uh, on the northern coast of Australia, perhaps to engage with oh, multiple American escort carriers down here. So these are not full-blown fleet carriers. They're light carriers that we've spotted here off the northern coast of Australia. So we may have a large-scale naval battle brewing. Uh, the main question is, how many of my carriers can I bring south and uh, get into the act? And American bombers apparently are still operating. Wow, those heavy... These, I think, are level 5 American strategic bombers. So they're like B-36 Dominators or B-29... Actually, they look like B-29 Super Fortresses. But they can literally uh, knock out an entire city in a single raid. At least we've got some flak there uh, doing a little bit of damage to the bombers they've upgraded in England. We really need to take England out of this war. Because they're knocking out entire industries in a single turn. And they've got good escorts, too. Jesus Christ, man. Defensive anti-aircraft fire and fighter support against that raid. The American TAC bombers aren't level 5 yet. The British fighters are level 5, though. They got their meteor jets. Good old jets and... What do you call them? Uh, mosquitoes? Uh-oh. Two tactical bombers hit El Aguila. I can't remember if the British actually attacked with their tanks there yet, but if they haven't, then they're probably... Our, our guys are probably dead. Meanwhile, large numbers of enemy warships coming into play here, bombarding the Normandy coast. One would wonder if the Allies plan for some sort of uh, secondary amphib... Oh, wow, they didn't attack, and then they did go ahead and attack, and their tanks did nothing. Nice! Good result for us. Um, but uh, one would wonder if they're going to plan another amphibious assault. They basically brought all their naval units forward. Perhaps they recognized us massing on the coast. I forgot to take Narvik! It was open and for the taking! The Americans are moving tactical bombers to border us in India? That's dumb. Those guys are going to get obliterated. Sometimes the AI just makes you scratch your head. Granted, I was just really stupid as well by failing to take Narvik, so... That's on me, I guess. American f escort carriers moving forward slowly... Uh, off the northern Australian coast. We've got a battleship. We've got a couple of cruisers. We've got a couple of escort carriers. The fact they're escort carriers, though, actually makes me kind of happy because it means I probably don't have to worry too much. Uh, I mean, I guess they could have more fleet carriers, but that's interesting if they're focusing their build priority on uh, single-use carriers rather than carriers that can do multiple strikes in a single turn. All right, so back to Europe here. Um, we've got a lot of enemy shipping here off the coast of France. We're going to try and destroy it. So if we go back to reports, we'll see the British Navy currently has 21 vessels. The American Navy has 30. So they've just completed six new vessels. Jesus flipping. All right. So the American industry is going to be tough for even the Japanese Navy to overcome, even if we're able to concentrate against it all. 
But uh, nonetheless, we're trying to go for these uh, British cruisers here off the coast, losing quite a few bombers in the process. Uh, British jets are intercepting us, so we're losing pretty heavy casualties there. Um, but uh, you can see there, they're losing some as well. So those bombers didn't destroy the enemy, but they did damage it. We can send in our fighters uh, to finish it off. Some American interceptors trying to protect these guys. Oh, our fighters didn't do anything. All right, let's rebuild this one. Bring this fighter in. Uh, Alright, we'll bring this level 10 fighter in. It's going to fight off American P-51s, and it'll finish off that light cruiser. So that's a good result. That, um, that uh, enemy light cruiser is destroyed. That brings the British down to 20. So even though the American fleet is super strong, the British fleet is waning at least. We've got some Stukas going in now. Some more escorts trying to help us out. Our Stukas are elite, so they had level 11 hit points, but they lose two there. And then our uh, second Stuka goes in here. More American interceptors. Jesus Christ, how many fighters do they have? At least they're losing heavy casualties there. They lost like five fighters on that one. All right, so second Allied cruiser destroyed. This destroyer here north near the Hague. More Allied interceptors. More of our escorts. Wow, they lost five casualties there for their uh, uh, fighters. We lost a total of... One Stuka hit point. Another interceptor raid. They must have a technology. Yeah, these guys are doing multiple intercepts. So they have some sort of technology le that lets their fighters uh, es intercept or escort well more than once. So we destroyed that destroyer. Haha, <laughs> we destroyed the destroyer. Um, can't upgrade my fighters to level 5 yet. It really would be great. So another allied naval vessel destroyed. The British are now down to 18 naval vessels. Send our... Sub through the channel to see what else is out there. Enemy contact. An enemy uh, amphibious craft here. Can we hit it with anything else? It would be great to be able to bomb twice. Doesn't look like it. Alright. Um, so at least we destroyed half of it. So there's an enemy unit there. A number three. I don't know what that means. And then we'll go ahead and we'll reinforce our ground units, which just finished expelling the allies from Europe, or from the continent of Europe. Some of these guys apparently aren't in good enough supply to do that. Upgrade these guys to level 4 tanks. So mainly, I wish there was a button I could press that would just be like, upgrade everybody. That would be kind of cool. Okay. Ooh, we've got level 3 anti-aircraft now. That'll be useful. Okay. All right, just trying to keep track of everything is a little bit difficult this late in the game. I mean, honestly, if they want to land here, by all means, they'll land in a place with no supply. I'd be fine with that. Okay. All right, amphibious transport. We can do two of them, so we'll do one with that heavy tiger tank. Maybe do one with a mechanized unit. We're also gonna need to build some transports as well, like just regular transports, which we can do seven of those. So we can be much, basically we need those two units to take a port real quick on the British coast and then go from there. Which we might be able to do, I mean, with destroying the enemy uh, navy as effectively as we did uh, with our air units here. 
presumably we should be able to clear a path given a couple of months time and I think we have till 1947 for this game so there is that uh, let's go ahead and attack these guys have basically no supply so we'll pull back maybe they'll be lured out to meet us um, Italy Him back. Swap with these guys. And the American headquarters unit is dead. Alright, let's reinforce these guys. And these guys. And these guys. All right, so we destroy the American headquarter unit on Italy. I fully expect these uh, bombers to fly away next turn. Meanwhile, our garrison troops barely hung out at Alagela. We've got a sandstorm. Over here. All right, let's upgrade this mechanized unit to infantry weapons level 2. And can we reinforce here? No, we can't. All right, we're going to try and surround Cairo, and maybe we'll be able to reduce it that way. Meanwhile, the enemy didn't appear to reinforce the eastern part of India. Interesting. All right, so we're advancing deep into western India here, moving on both Delhi from the west toward Jopadar and also potentially Bombay, trying to keep my headquarter unit within a reasonable degree of both of these guys to ensure that, uh, that they get all the supply they need. I think we'll do that. That'll be smart. Um, so our airborne and some armies here might advance through rough terrain on Bombay. Uh, otherwise, what we'll probably do is advance on Jodhpur and then move on either Delhi or Bombay. Uh, meanwhile, in eastern India, these British troops appear to be out of supply, or not really, but our own troops are now in supply, or at least some of them are. All right, that's good news. Let's reinforce these guys, because we can... First things first, Northern India, let's knock out this American uh, strategic bomber. Or tactical bomber, sorry. So we still can't advance on the actual city, but we did destroy an enemy unit here, so that's good. I need to get that guy some supply so he can move. All right, so we're going to go after this Indian unit here in the city of Damper or whatever it is. Move these special forces units up here. A level three American tank. That's concerning. All right, we'll move this army in here to the city. Here, over here. All 
All right, so advancing in eastern India as well, destroying a British unit there. All right, we're going to spend this turn reinforcing some of our... Apparently I can't... Reinforce my air units, so that's a thing. Um... Interesting. These guys have one supply. What's the point of that? I need more headquarters or something. Or s supply cities. I don't know. We're going to have to kind of hold pad, I think. This army can upgrade at least. Get some anti-air. I need more headquarters units. All right. So I'll move these guys down here. Okay. All right, so the question is, what do we do? Uh, we know there's American carers back in this way. can't do reconnaissance that way because it's raining great i've got these maritime bombers i can't use this turn because of the damn weather uh. gotta make contact All right, so we've detected enemy carriers over here. They're level eight. We've also got enemy battleships here. We can move this guy into a port. Hopefully that keeps him safe. Oh, God. There's a lot of warships here. Let's move over here. We can't hit those carriers. So we're going to end up doing a carrier battle against their air wing. This could be the climactic sea battle that I'm not ready for at all. I basically brought one carrier to play. I can bring another down. Oh, I didn't attack with him? Oh, no, I did. Never mind. I just really don't want to shoot my, my air wings to pieces. Alright, so we destroyed that enemy cruiser. So we got that cruiser's gone. Pull this battleship out. Move this... Battleship in. Finish off the bad guy there. That battleship north. Alright, so we'll deal with the enemy interceptors here. We'll do some damage to their air wing. We're going to have to pull that carrier out a bit. Finish that battleship off with our own. Retreat to the north. It's kind of like I really wish I could get down there to deal with the enemy. Why can't I... 
<laughs> These guys are set to fighter camp and I keep forgetting to change it. Well, it should come in handy in the inevitable counterattack that the enemy levels against me. Oh, nice. We can go after that carrier air wing. The question is, do we want to? I'd rather go after the cruiser, because I can hit him twice. Then I can rush a battleship in. Destroy him. And then swing our other battleship in. To deal with the enemy carrier. Destroy that. Nice. Bring this battleship in. Destroy this carrier. Nice. And then, with what's left of my surface fleet, get between the enemy and my own carriers. Very nice. All right. That result was appreciated. Um, this guy still has a pretty strong air wing. So let's get him down here, too. Just in the event the enemy decides to get frisky. Alright, so we do have two enemy cruisers down here that could do damage to our battleship or our carriers. They might knock one carrier out, potentially. Uh, that's certainly a possibility. But we just knocked out two enemy escort carriers as well as a host of surface ships. The American fleet had started the turn at 30. They lost all six brand new ships they built. Uh, well, presumably their brand, sh brand new ships are back in America. But uh, you know what I mean. They lost all the ships... That they had brought to play. Um, we're going to move these fighters down here. These guys over here. And we're going to bring this headquarter unit south to reinforce New Guinea. So that's a very good result for us. And then we're going to finish that American headquarter unit off on Java. The island of Java is now firmly back in our control. And there you have it. We're going to keep most of our transports back a little bit. Just in the event the Americans break out. They still have 24 naval units versus our 16. But uh, I think some of those are in the Atlantic still. And that was a pretty massive battle. Again, they have one light cruiser, one heavy cruiser. Both still at uh, full strength. I don't think there's anything else I can do here with my ships. I think it might not hurt to purchase something for Japan. It's going to take forever. The problem is I don't think I'm ever going to see these carriers. 18 months, I'm never going to see that. 18 turns, I'm never going to see that. I might see an escort carrier, so I guess we can go with that. Maybe that's why the Americans built their escort carriers, because they, they could get them relatively quickly. I can actually build a few escort carriers... So we'll do that. And then I think we'll also build some new destroyers. Can't go with the anterior, but I can purchase that. So we'll purchase a destroyer, two escort carriers. You can see here Japan has three destroyers under construction, two escort carriers. We also have some kamikazes, which will be ready next turn, as well as some maritime bombers that will be ready later this month. Um, so massive naval battle down here that m largely went our way, barring any craziness that hasn't occurred yet. Um, I'm hoping that'll drive the Americans back. Um, destroyed an American unit here. These guys are still... Alright, so we'll move these guys back next turn, but just trying to get them down. Keep moving them. Meanwhile, I think Germany already did everything it was going to do. What can I upgrade with my... I can get anti-air... 
for my uh, headquarter units. Upgrade some of these cities here with uh, anti-air defenses. It's expensive. It's kind of an interesting thing the game does is making you uh, spend money on air defenses for cities because in one city, it's not that much money. But if you spread that out over the course of the entire map, that actually adds up to be quite a lot. And um, I kind of like that they do that because one of the things I think that often gets under-discussed or reported in World War II uh, amongst enthusiast circles is the fact that the Germans spent a huge, huge sum of money uh, and resources upgrading their air defenses uh, against uh, Allied aircraft, primarily with a view to uh, go with anti-aircraft weaponry. So they sent an absorbent amount of money on, on flak cannons, on our ammunition for flak cannons. And so as a result... Uh, they poured resources in uh, to uh, defending the heartland with anti-aircraft guns. And those guns, that ammunition, those resources could have been better employed elsewhere uh, and uh, likely had more of an impact on the war as a whole if they, had, uh, if they had spread some of their investments out to other things other than just anti-aircraft. With that being said, we are not going to learn from history. We are going to repeat it. And we are going to invest heavily in protecting some of these cities, as well as some of these industrial plants, some of these factories, uh, to uh, hopefully uh, maybe give the Allied aircraft a bloody nose. We do have level 3 anti-aircraft. That's not anything to sneeze at. Uh, where's Ploiesti? I should uh, be upgrading the anti-air defenses there as well. Bucharest probably also. Is that really Ploiesti? That's the only oil well for Ploiesti on the map. We've got this resource over here. I don't have I don't have money for it anymore. Okay. Alright, so that's that. North Africa's done. Um Europe's done. Trying to think if there's anything we didn't do. We did Norway. Argentina. Don't cry for me, Argentina. We don't want to forget about them. Nice. All right. So starting to do damage to the Chileans at Santiago. Perhaps over time we will wear them down, just as we wore down the Brazilians. In any event, we should have some additional resources coming for Argentina before too long. It looks like, uh, actually, next turn we should have an Argentinian corps arriving, and then an, uh, turn two turns from now an Argentinian army will arrive, so we'll be able to send substantial reinforcements uh, to deal with the garrison at Santiago, and they'll be level 10 rather than level 7 like we're attacking with right now. So uh, that'll be good to see. We can move our headquarters unit off as well, get some supplies to the front. Uh, some German V weapons are on the way. Uh, more German fighters and aircraft are on the way. Uh, all in all, things are not looking disastrous yet. For us, I mean, the the war is going well, so I think that's a long enough a long enough episode of me rambling and kind of just chit chatting. I hope you guys are continuing to enjoy the series. We'll see what comes uh, in our next turn, which is uh, another summer turn for the Axis. So uh, we're working on clearing the channel. You can see we brought our sub out to play. Maybe that'll lure more Allied naval units in. The American Navy lost six units this turn. They're down to 24. The British are down to 18. So all told, that's 42 naval units versus our 16 Japanese. We'll see if they counter the Japanese naval uh, victories there off the coast of um, Argentina. Or, no, sorry, off Australia. I keep, I don't know what's going on with me, guys. Sometimes I feel like maybe I'm dyslexic. Uh, but anyway, uh, so off the coast of Australia, the American national morale is plummeting. So is the British morale. Maybe we'll get them to surrender. Um, you can see the casualties for the Americans this turn. Almost 3,000 MPPs. They spent uh, almost 3000 just one turn ago. You can see the increasing expenditures for the Americans as they attempt to offset their losses with greater and greater reserves. The British, however, the, their income is actually slightly increased over the last few turns, but you can see their losses vastly outstrip their income, and that's why they're 
Uh, their Army continues to decline. It's under 38 units. Their Navy continues to decline. It's under 20 units. Their Air Force continues to decline. It's under 10 units. So uh, the, the British Empire is crumbling. The American economy is still in full gear and hanging in there. But those are all issues and topics that we'll take a look at in our next episode. Until our next episode, however, guys, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out. <laughs>